I was at VidCon last weekend and it was spectacular, of course. I was hanging out with my friends, I was meeting people, and I met a lot of you guys. And you guys were super nice and you are like, oh, hey, I like your videos. And I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Which is a thing I do. And I was surrounded by Australians for a large portion of the thing. Anyway, let's take a couple of steps back. Not long ago I made a video, uh, this video probably linked somewhere, about my relationship with race and my interpretation of the race relationship in Nerdfighteria, and it sparked an interest in me about uh, race representation and YouTube as a whole. So when I went to VidCon I left with the idea of having a good old fashioned time with my friends and all that jazz, but then I also went with the idea of paying attention to how many people of color I saw and how they were interacting. The first thing I noticed was in the itinerary and how, you know, since the discussion of women on YouTube has been booming recently, I was kind of expecting and or hoping that the discussion of other marginalized groups on YouTube would be quite prevalent as well. And unsurprisingly, there was a massive um, LGBT, what was it? The Being LGBT on YouTube Challenges and Rewards panel. And it was good. I mean, it was good. But funnily enough, there wasn't actually uh, a women on YouTube panel. There was just like a gathering established via Twitter. And a good amount of people showed up to that. It was good. I mean, we discussed things and shared ideas and stuff, and that was lovely. Also, there was, uh, there was the Less Than Famous panel, which was very good. A lot of very important questions answered and asked. A uh, good discussion. But do you know what all these panels had in common besides, you know, discussing parts of the YouTube community? <sighs> they all had no people of color on them. None of these panels had a person of color on them. The LGBT panel, no people of color. The Less Than Famous panel, no people of color. The Women of YouTube gathering, big surprise, no people of color. However, they were good discussions. Don't think I think they were bad discussions just because there weren't people of color on them. I'm just saying that there is a subset of experience, life experience possibly, missed because there wasn't a person of color to make their voice heard. And it makes me feel like they're saying that there aren't any people of color who fit into any of these categories, which just obviously isn't true. And I did, I talked to James, the guy who proposed the idea of the Less Than Famous panel, and he said that only a couple of people of color submitted to to be part of the panel, and it made me kind of sad, and it also made me feel like I should have submitted had I known that the you know, people of color were not going to be represented at all. I didn't see a person of color on any panels until I went to an awesome and inclusive new industry panel. <laughs> Oh, the little panel that could. I don't know if it was because there was a lack of interest, or if it was because it was buried between a Gregory Brothers meetup, a Shane Dawson podcast, a Rhett and Link signing, and just to name a few. It was basically buried between all of these other popular YouTuber things, and it was sort of squeezed off to the side. Perhaps 30 people sitting in on the panel that was dedicated to discussing uh, race representation on YouTube. But I think that was the only time throughout the whole of the VidCon weekend where the people of color ratio to white people ratio was not terribly one-sided because throughout the entire thing like you'd see people of color but they'd always be sprinkled amongst the white kids and i'm wondering if it's people reasons like not being able to afford it or not being interested in it or if it's because they don't think they can because they think it's like a white people thing there were loads of people at the women of youtube gathering and there were so many people at the lgbt Panel, but there were so few people in the one panel discussing race relationship with YouTube and I think it's such an important discussion and I know some people think that we're somehow beyond race and that talking about it and bringing it up is what makes it worse and that puts more of a separation between people of different colors but I think that as long as the top YouTubers are white cis het guys then we can't necessarily pretend that we're beyond race in VidCon, the wall between the content creators and the people who enjoy the content is supposed to disappear and I think that's why it's such a good time to bring up these important questions, these big questions, to have these big important discussions. Another thing that was brought up during the diversity panel was if it would be helpful to have uh, networks specifically for people of color or if that would separate them more. And I was a big fan of the idea of having a network for people of color and the idea that Networks are supposed to lift you up and uh, shine their light on you. I remember Tyler Oakley saying at the LGBT panel that a thing that he tries to do because he has such a, a massive following is he tries to shine his light on people who he thinks deserves to have more recognition or attention. 
And I think that's a primary thing that networks are supposed to do. They're supposed to lift you up and they're supposed to help shine their light on you so you get the uh, acknowledgement or recognition and or attention that you deserve. And I think that is a really good idea, especially in marginalized groups because marginalized groups tend to have a sort of attitude that says they have to compete. And I think that if there's a network or if there's just a group of people and they decide that they're going to work together, they're going to collaborate instead of competing, they're all going to be more successful. With that thought in mind, I have a list of people down in the doobly doo who happen to be people of color, who I think make fantastic content. And you, of course, can tell me people, spectacular people of color, making spectacular content. Tell me and I will check them out because uh, again, I like to shine my light, whatever, I hit this water bottle, whatever light I have, I like to shine it on people who don't get as much recognition as they should. I like using natural light, but French the llama, I think it's going to rain in a bit. It went from being okay to being, oh, maybe it's the tone, like the video, the tone of the video has gotten heavier, so the lighting has changed. I made sure to stay away from, from, from Hayley G. Hoover and from Hannah Hart because I would fangirl both of them. And they're people, they don't need me to fangirl them, they don't, they don't need that. So I made sure to keep my distance and just sort of admire them from afar because I really enjoy their content. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is getting weird and I'm getting embarrassed. So 